Kwejo. President, please be seated. The court is back in session and the floor is given to the international co-prosecutor to put further question to this witness. You may now proceed. I would just like to follow up and better understand a few of the questions that you answered this morning. Um, you indicated that you had nine children, but four of them died. Did any of your children die during the DK regime? Answer. In the democratic Cambodia period, I had one child died in that period. My deceased child was uh, very small and young at that time, and uh, he or she could not uh, eat uh, gruel, and there was no treatment uh, for him or her. Thank you, sir. I may come back to that in a moment. But I want to follow up again on the – ask you a few more questions. You indicated that you received a list when you were the village chief of 15 families, and you were told that they would be sent to a new village. Is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. These 15 families, did they have anything in common that you could understand why they were on this list? Were they all people of a particular category? Answer. Actually, uh, the relocation oh, uh, was under the pretext, and uh, they were told that they would go and live with uh, their relatives. Thank you. I understand that, and I'll come to that in a moment. But the names on the list, the families on the list, could you see or understand why these 15 families were selected? Were they all new people, for example? What the answer? They were new people. What the they were new people. Did you know if any of them had any ranks in either the Lon Nol Army or Civil Service, or if they were intellectuals? No. Answer. These people who were asked to relocate uh, to live in a new village, that or what you want to ask? Yes, I'm speaking about the 15 families on the list you were given. Answer. As for the list of uh, family, 15 families, some of them were in civil service and some were in the army. Now, earlier you mentioned this young man, Gao, I believe his name was, who was given a bicycle and clothing and asked to search for ranks. Do you know? what the instructions were as far as what ranks the Khmer Rouge regime at that time was searching for? Answer. They 
who would, uh, the Khmer Rouge, uh, would search for those who uh, graduated Bak uh, Duk, or in the current system, schooling system, it was, it, it is in uh, 12, grade 12. What happened to those who have been found that were graduates at that rank or who had served in a high civil service position or who were officers in the Lon Nol Army. Do you know what happened to them? After they were found, danger would be starved on them. Did any of them disappear? Yes, there was disappearance. Now, going back to the 15 families, you indicated that you were able to save eight of those families. So now I'd like to talk about the seven families that you were not able to hide. Were these families all people of adult age in their 20s or 30s? Or what ages were these people? There was a mixture of uh, age. Uh, as there were some elderly people. There were children in one family. Uh, there were five, four, or eight uh, members. Were the children also taken away? But answer, yes. Did you ever see any of those people in those seven families again? Answer, I have never seen them back. And then, sir, you indicated something about clothing being returned in relation to these families. Can you explain in a bit more detail what happened with the clothing that made you, led you to conclude that the people were killed? Answer. When they were taken away and clothing was returned and uh, some would recognize the clothing of uh, one particular individual. During that time, uh, there were lack of uh, clothing to wear. So tell me if this is correct or not. Was the clothing that was returned the very same clothing that the people were wearing when they disappeared, when they were taken away? Answer, there were new and old clothing. Not all of them were old. My question is, was the clothing returned, the clothing that the people were wearing when they were taken away from your village? Answer. The clothing which were returned, some of uh, the clothing belonged to those who uh, were wearing at the time that they were taken away, and some were was new clothing. Thank you, sir. Now I want to move to another topic, 
and that is the 1st of January dam. Sir, did you work on the construction of a dam by that name? Answer. I uh, was working in the irrigation and uh, the work size that uh, I was working was uh, 300 meters away from the dam. And uh, for those, uh, the number one group uh, which has strength uh, built the dam. So the work, by the way, were you supervising a unit of workers? Is it, was that your assignment? Answer. In dry season, I was asked to uh, dig the irrigation system, and in uh, a rainy season, I was working in the fields. Do you know, sir, when did the construction of this first January dam begin? The 1st January Dam The comrades from the party uh, held chair the inauguration the ceremony on the 1st of January. That is why the name was named as such. First of January of which year? Which year was the inauguration ceremony? The answer. The, uh, the construction started. The inauguration started on uh, the first uh, January. But uh, actually, the actual construction uh, started uh, before the 1st of January. And on the 1st of January inauguration ceremony, it was chaired by uh, Paul Potts. Okay, so the construction started at the end of which year? The ceremony was January 1st, but this construction began in 1975, 76, 77. Could you explain which year? Answer. The construction started in the early 1977, and also it started uh, in late 1976. You mentioned the inauguration ceremony. Did any high officials attend that ceremony. Martin, can you answer? I do not know those individual, the high-ranking officials. I noticed there was a presence of Pol Potts and uh, the chief of the zone appointed to Pol Pot and told me that uh, he was Pol Pot. Kai Pok pointed out to you Pol Pot. Is that correct? Answer. Actually, uh, those, uh, the high-ranking officer were not referred by name, but uh, we were told that Anka came to attend the inauguration. I uh, do not recall uh, the word used exactly at that time.
to refer to on, on guard or those who chaired the inauguration ceremony. Okay, thank you. This first January dam, uh, what body of water did it hold back? Did it dam? Was it a river of a particular name? Answer. First uh, January dam is was to hold the water at Stung Chinat. And at the current times, uh, the water uh, could be used to irrigate the fields at that area. Actually, uh, the old dam uh, was kept unused. It was not destroyed. And there was a bombing on the old dam. And, the, and because of uh, the bombing and the destruction of the old dam, the new one was built. So if I understood you correctly, it was the river Chinit that was dammed. Is that correct? Answer, yes, the dam was used to uh, keep uh, water in Stung uh, Chinat to irrigate uh, the fields. Can you tell us where it was that the dam was built? Is there a name of the village or commune where that dam was? Or could you tell us the district it was in? Answer. The first January dam was in Balang Commune, in the southern part of Balang Commune, and it was situated in Kampung Tumo in the north. And uh, there was another dam named the Sixth January Dam. It was in uh, the north. So that, thank you for bringing that up. What is the relationship? Well, first of all, what is the distance between the 1st January Dam and 6th January Dam? Answer, I do not know the distance, but for the approximate distance, uh, it was about four or five kilometers away from each other. Now, you indicated that you were working on irrigation near the dam. Connected to the dam projects, were there projects to build canals from the water out to irrigate fields? So there were irrigation projects extending the water trapped by the dam. Is that correct? Is my understanding correct? Answer, yes, it is correct. Actually, the canal was dug so that the water can be channeled to the lower part of the area. Was there a connection between the 1st January Dam and the 6th January Dam? Were there any canals between them? Actually, the 1st January Dam and uh, the 6th January Dam uh, was, were close to each other. Actually, uh, the water was from Stung uh, Jinat, but uh, from the, the 6th January Dam uh, to another area, it was, the water was from another uh, stream or river. The group that worked on the 1st January Dam, was it the same group working on the 6th January Dam, or were they separate?
the answer. Actually, I was uh, working in the dam construction of uh, the 1st January dam, and uh, for the 6th January dam, uh, it was constructed by those uh, uh, in uh, Kampong Thom province. My commune, that, that is uh, Srongai commune, it was close to the 1st uh, January dam. So from my house to the bridge uh, where there was a uh, 1st January dam, it was about three kilometers. So when you worked on the dam, how many people did you work with or supervise? Answer. In my work site, there were many people. There were about 100 workers. I supervised the workers not to allow them fall sick. And if a worker fell sick, uh, we would find uh, medicines for them to have. Actually, there were no modern medicines at that time, and uh, the medicine was made from uh, rabbit drops. I'm going to get to that, and, and let me just caution you to try to just answer the question I have, because many of the things I will come to later. So I asked you about the... Um, I believe I asked you about the number of people you were working with, and you said 100. How many people were working in total on the first January dam at one time? Can you give an estimate of the number of workers? cannot answer that question. However, I knew that there were many, many workers at the work site. Well, we certainly understand you cannot give us a precise number, um, but can you give us an estimate, or would it help you? Well, let me first try you now. Now, can you give us an estimate of the number of people that were working on the first January dam? I uh, cannot give you an estimate because there were tens of thousands of uh, workers there. So the workers started working not only at the first January dam but also at the sixth January dam. Thank you. Well, sir. Just to remind you, in your statement to OCIJ, on the fourth page in both English and French, and uh, the fifth page in Khmer, excuse me, also the fourth page in Khmer, you estimated 20,000 people from sectors 41, 42, and 43 came to participate. Is that, does that sound accurate to you now, you, what you told the investigators quite a few years ago? in 2008. President, a witness, please observe the microphone. Witness. There were many workers and uh, the number that you uh, quoted is about the right. Was the dam finished while you were still the village chief?
when I was still the village chief, the work site of the dam reached Krobau area, and from uh, Krobau to Barai, the uh, work started in 1978. So I conclude that the construction of the dam was not yet concluded when Ong Kai removed me from the village chief position. However, the irrigation water was used while the dam was still being constructed. Was the dam finished during the DK period, if you know? Before the fall of Democratic Kampuchea, was the dam completed? The construction was not completely uh, concluded. However, I believe it was 90% uh, complete as uh, irrigation water was already used. And then they continued to uh, finish, uh, finish the work later on. Did the dam have any problem during the rainy seasons? Was anything w destroyed or washed away? At the time of its completion, it was in its uh, basic form. There was no damage, and people were deployed to maintain the, the dam. There were about 100 of them who were assigned to, to watch over the dam or to patch any areas that there was leaking. Who was in charge of the dam project, if you know? My question, because I think there's no interpretation coming. Do you know, Mr. Witness, do you know who was in charge of the dam project? I do not know who was in charge as it is beyond uh, my understanding. Do you know if Kai Pok had any role in the dam? Kai Pok uh, was assigned from the uh, upper echelon to overall in charge of the workforce at the district at the work site, and he would visit the work site almost on a daily basis. Thank you. And do you know who was below him, directly below him, who his deputies were? No, I do not know. Uh, sir, I believe you indicated your village was about three kilometers from the site. Did you and the workers you supervised sleep in your village when you worked on the dam? No, we did not uh, stay at home. Huts were built uh, 
at the work site, although it was close to the village, but we rested at the uh, work site, at the dam work site. And only every 10 days, we uh, would uh, allow to visit the home. So during the 10-day periods you were at the work site, where would people sleep? They were uh, resting in uh, the same area that I was uh, resting. What was the youngest age of the workers? From what age did people begin to work? Yeah. The majority of the uh, workers there was from 18 years old and above, as they were the main force in the uh, mobile units. I refer to the workforce uh, for the dam construction. As for the workers at the feeding canals, usually they were married uh, men or women. So there were no children working uh, on the dam. Is that what you're saying, or do I misunderstand? No, there were no young children working there. Young children usually were assigned to collect cow dams. So were the children working in other jobs? Is that what you're saying? But not on the dam? Yes, that is right. What were the hours the working hours for those working on the dam. The working hour started from 4 o'clock in the early morning. We continued working until 11 when we uh, stopped for a gruel and we restarted working again from 2 until 5 when we uh, stopped and ate our gruel again. And then after 5 o'clock, what happened? President, Mr. Witness, please observe the uh, microphone. Witness. After we had our meal at five, and in order to expedite the, the, the work at the work site, we started working again, and we worked through the night until 10 o'clock. Mr. Witness, if you started up again at 7 p.m. and worked till 10, um, I think what you've just told us, 4 a.m. to 11 is 7 hours, 2 to 5, 3 more, that's 10, 7 to 10, 3 more, that's 13 hours, if I've calculated correctly. How much were the workers paid?
how can you talk about the wage? The only thing that we wanted at the time was just a sufficient gruel to eat. And there was not even enough gruel for us to, uh, to eat. Well, sir, did any of those workers prefer to go back and farm for rice or become fishermen or do other work? Were people working on that dam voluntarily? Or were they forced? <clears throat> it is this difficult uh, to say either it was uh, voluntary or it was forced. Whatever the condition was, we had to work there. Well, Mr. Witness, I saw you laughing when I asked about the salary. Um, and I, you smiled again when I asked about people volunteering. Is it the fa a fact, sir, that the people who were working there were afraid that if they didn't do exactly what they were told and carry out that work, that something very bad would happen to them? Bad. Yes, uh, that is correct. So you talked about how only adults were working at the dam. So what happened with families? If a man a woman were there and they had three or four young children, would they spend the nights together, with, eat with their families, and speak to their children at night? Sometimes for those uh, parents who had many uh, children, they requested to uh, return to, to their children at night time if their villages were nearby, and they would be allowed to do so. But for other uh, parents whose villages were far from the work site, they would not be allowed to return to uh, their children at night time. Did families eat together, husbands and wives at least, who were working on the site? Only if they were working at the same work site, then they would be allowed to eat together, otherwise they would eat separately. There was communal eating, is that correct? Yes. They ate uh, communally. Usually the gruel was cooked in large pots and will be distributed evenly to every worker, namely one or two uh, ladles of gruel for each worker. Or sometimes if they were given uh, cooked rice, the same amount will be given to each worker. Was the work physically difficult? The work was extremely difficult and it was during the hot month and 
when the weather was hotter, it means we had to work harder because there was no rain. And our skin was exposed uh, directly to uh, the sunlight. Was this gruel that workers were fed and whatever else they were fed sufficient for people to keep up their strength from your observations? President, witness, please observe the microphone. Witness, uh, I apologize. The gruel was merely enough. As the uh, workforce at the Danberg site was the uh, regular workforce, although we were given gruel to eat, it was not uh, the uh, watery gruel, it was a rather uh, a thick uh, gruel. So were people healthy, or did you observe them to be malnourished? No. They were not in the uh, best uh, health form, but everyone just tried to, to work there, and sometimes we had to seek uh, traditional medicine to, for the uh, treatment for illness. And we also cooked uh, in large pots the uh, herbal medicine for the workers at the work site uh, to drink. Excuse me. Were workers given a quota, for example, a certain amount of dirt to carry per day? Based on the, uh, what happened on the ground, not everyone could achieve the work uh, quota. Uh, it depends on the uh, soil condition. Sometimes we could uh, achieve one cubic meter, or uh, on other days we could achieve two cubic meters of dirt. Digging. What would happen if those above you learned that workers did not fulfill their quota? What would happen to the worker? If the village chief had ill in pension and reported on to the upper echelon, then there would be problems. However, if the village chiefs understood the situation and kept quiet on the work quota, then we just kept on working. What would happen, sir, if your supervisor said, your team is not working well. Did you fear at all consequences for you yourself if the work did not go to plan?
President Witness, please uh, hold on. And Council Copper, do you have the floor? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I object to this question. It's asking for speculation. Um, the witness can be asked um, on concrete uh, events, but not on asking, uh, not on speculating as to what would happen. So this is asking for speculation. That's why I object. I thought my question, but I could rephrase it, was did he fear, uh, and I'm happy to rephrase it so that there's nothing conditional about it. Sir, when you were working there, did you fear that if your plans of the upper level were not met, that you could face serious consequences yourself? If the group did not achieve the work quota, the group had to be responsible to the chief, and the chief had to resolve the matter. Whether the chief had to report the matter with reasons to the upper echelon, then the group would be all right. Well, Mr. Witness, let me just ask you to explain a comment you made during your interview in 2008. And this is on the fourth page in English. The French ERN is 00277227. And in Khmer, it's 00239909. The bottom of the page in English, you stated during the construction, middle level designated the plans for lower level to do, then reported to upper level. After upper level inspected and saw that work was not going to a plan, upper level accused lower level of betrayal and killed them. Sometimes middle level arrested and killed lower level too. In particular, the majority of the team leaders were the ones who reported and arrested their own team members after having accused them of being enemies. So, sir, there's many things I'd like you to explain about this statement. First of all, is this accurate, what you said in 2008? Please uh, repeat your question. Is it true what you said in 2008, that if work didn't go to plan, upper level would accuse lower level of being enemies and kill them? Yes. And who would carry out the killing? Were they people from a district or sector? Do you know? That. However, those people will be arrested and sent to be detained at the security office, and most of them uh, would not uh, return to the work site. What was the security office?
Was that a former pagoda? After months had been disrobed, the pagoda was turned into a security office. And sir, there's another term in what I read from your statement that's of interest to me I'd like you to explain. You said when work didn't go to plan, leaders could, atter- could accuse their team members of being enemies. So during this DK period, what did it take for someone to be accused of being an enemy? Was it sufficient not to carry enough dirt would make you an enemy? others could achieve uh, the work quarter and we did not, then we would be in a difficult position. And in some uh, cases, the people would be taken away or the chief would be taken away. Thank you. But my question has to do with the word enemy. Were people called enemies simply if they didn't carry enough dirt, didn't fulfill their quota? said those people would be considered the uh, infiltrated enemies and that they were the one who obstruct the work of progress or the, the work of movement. We only have a few minutes before the lunch break. Sir, were there any accidents that you were aware of at the dam construction where people died, workers died? In my unit, none of my workers was taken away. However, uh, some members of my unit uh, died uh, from a landslide at the dam work site. So is that they died when the soil collapsed and it buried them alive? Is that what happened? Yes, uh, that is correct, because people were uh, competing amongst uh, others, and uh, sometimes because they were uh, working at night, and uh, the soil from the top part of the dam to collapse onto the workers at the lower part of the dam. And these individuals, my last question, who were buried alive, died, what happened afterwards? Were they given a traditional funeral? Were their families compensated in any way? who died from soil collapse, 
there was nothing in the form of a compensation. They simply died. President, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Ao Ho. It is now time for the lunch break. We take a break now and resume at 1.30 this afternoon. Court officer, please assist the witness at the witness and expert waiting room during the lunch break and invite him to the courtroom again at 1.30 this afternoon. Security personnel, you are instructed to take Kiel Sampon to the uh, waiting room downstairs and have him return to attend the proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now in recess. <laughs>